It's like putting your hand on the third rail of the universe. Go is putting you in a place where you're always at the very farthest reaches of your capacity. They want to understand what understanding is. Games are very convenient in that a lot of them have scores, so it's very easy to measure incremental progress. So I'm going to show you a few videos of the agent system, the AI. The agent system has to learn everything for itself, just from the raw pixels. It doesn't know what it's controlling. It doesn't even know what the object of the game is and pretty much gets the ball back every time. It found the optimal strategy was to dig a tunnel around the side and put the ball around the back of the wall. As the strongest Go player in Europe, we would like to invite you to our offices in London, both to meet you in person and to share with you an exciting Go project that we are working on. The first visit, I think maybe I want me sit in the special room, push many, many wear in my hand. To see we were a serious operation and we were serious people um, doing proper research. And the search time is getting better and better. Our mission is to fundamentally understand intelligence and we create it artificially. All the little patterns cascade together, layer after layer after layer after layer. I started talking about the game of Go with Demis more than 20 years ago. And so this has been a, a really long journey. If we can crack Go, we know we've done something special. Some people thought it would be never because they felt that to succeed at Go, you needed human intuition. Go is the world's oldest continuously played board game. There's only one type of piece. There's only one type of move. And then your goal is to create a linked group of your stones that surrounds some empty territory. You earn points by surrounding territory and at the end of the game, the person with the most territory wins. It seems really simple, but then you sit down to play and you realize right away, it's like, well, I technically know what I'm allowed to do, but I have no clue what I should do. Go is incredibly challenging for computers to tackle because compared to, say, chess, the number of possible moves in a position is much larger in chess. So even if you took all the computers in the world and ran them for a million years, that wouldn't be enough compute power to calculate all the possible variation. So we have to come up with some kind of clever algorithm to mimic what people do with their intuition. So with Fanhui, we agreed a best of five match, and we agreed it would be filmed, you know, we would treat it as a serious match. I play with AlphaGo. Ajia Huang pushed the stone for AlphaGo. In that first match, I think something clicked for him that this wasn't an ordinary Go program. We weren't just doing the, the same as everyone else, that something new was happening. After losing, 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 you can feel his pressure is getting heavier and heavier. And several times after the game, he said he wanted to go out for fresh air. I lose this program, and I don't understand myself and the human professional Go player lose with the program. But I will, will be happy for play in the story. The computer named AlphaGo was able to beat the European human champion. Researchers have made a significant breakthrough. There's a big difference between the way the uh, IBM computer beat Kasparov. The way we start off training AlphaGo is by showing it 100,000 games that strong amateurs have played that we've downloaded from the internet. And we first initially get AlphaGo to mimic the human player. So AlphaGo is one significant step towards that. Because people talk terrible things about you match with AlphaGo. The Go world were skeptical about how strong really was AlphaGo and how much further did it need to get to beat the top professionals. So our program is improving over time and we want to push the AI algorithm to the limit and see how far this kind of self-improving process can go. A match like no other is about to get underway in South Korea. We will take on artificial intelligence program AlphaGo and the ultimate human versus machine smackdown. So far, AlphaGo has beaten every challenge we've given it, but we won't know its true strength until we play somebody who is at the top of the world, likely Sadol. We don't know how well our system will play against someone as creative as Lee Sedol. Juan Wei is a good player, but he's nothing like the very top players. Lee Sedol is to go what Roger Federer is to tennis. He'll be there next year, and the year after that, and the year after that. Maybe not 100%, maybe 99.999% think Lee Sedol will win very easily. Master Guang started this school so that he could produce 
great player in Korea. He wants to do something that's innovative or takes things to the next level. So every Go player started his game, for sure. <laughs> Azure is the lead programmer and built the original search engine. So Azure's responsibility is quite a big one. Many of my friends, they are very excited about the match. They keep telling me that the whole world is watching. I was curious to meet you, such an amazing developer who made iPad <laughs> So Likewise, um, it's a real pleasure to meet you. And then I stopped playing when I was about 14. But I saw the games against Fan Hui and, and I didn't think it was quite at the level to play with me. But I heard that it's getting really stronger. It's very precious that we have Fan Hui with us. We can think of there being this space of all the things it knows about and it knows about most of it extremely well, but then there'll be these tricky lumps of knowledge that it just understands very poorly. And it's really hard for us to characterize when it's gonna enter into one of these lumps. But if it does, it can be completely delusional, thinking that it's alive on one part of the board when in fact it's dead or vice versa. Everybody in the team try to work more and more to fix the problem, but uh, I think it's difficult to fix this uh, very quickly. We've got version 18 in the pipeline, haven't we? these delusions are still a realistic possibility for the match. We have some weaknesses uh, that we, I don't think we're going to fix fully um, before the match. On Wednesday, live across the internet, this professional South Korean Go player will take on artificial intelligence program Alpha. About 8 million Koreans play the game of Go. There's some national pride involved, but it's more than that. We could bring in. All the war gave the pressure to Lizard. I just really hope we win this first game. If you lose the first game, you literally have to win three out of four, yeah. which is hard work. I'll start in the match room, and then I'm going to come in here and make sure I've finished okay, yeah. I'm Chris Garlock of the American Go eJournal. I want to give a shout out to all of the folks watching around the world. I think it's just amazing that we're here. <laughs> I was a bit nervous. It's the first time that I sit in front of a world-class Go player. And I actually can feel the spirit and courtesy of a great Go player, like Lee Sai Because I think it is the first time he faced a strange opponent. And that's, that's just a kind of a habit. All the different rooms are like exciting in different ways. Mm. It's quite nice to be here at the heart of the operation. Um, she, she thought, you know, she's a little bit behind. What if she knows everything about what's going to happen next? That's the maximum number of moves ahead that AlphaGo is looking from the current game position. In the games we see often around move 150, AlphaGo goes for the kill. I, I, I expected AlphaGo to win only one game. I mean, I think that's a natural response. But AlphaGo is human created. Everything that AlphaGo does, it does because a human has either created the data that it learns from, created the learning algorithm that learns from that data, created the search algorithm. All of these things have come from, from humans. In the battle between man versus machine, a computer just came out the victor. He's like, the game is finished, and he's like, out the back and back in his room. And I think a lot of computer scientists would be like that. He knows that this is just a really important game. Well, if I say anything about AlphaGo that is not normal, it's maybe the way it handles a game when it thinks it is, is ahead. And it builds up a tree of variations, and it then employs this value net that tells it how promising is the outcome of this particular variation. So AlphaGo tries to maximize its probability of winning. <laughs> Ooh, looks like uh, looks like Lee is taking a little bit of a break. Is it dull? Go to smoke? And AlphaGo just to play. It don't think about uh, the open deficit will be there or not. 
I thought, I thought it was, I thought it was a mistake. That's the kind of move uh, that you, that you play go for. The professional commentators almost unanimously said that not a single human player would have chosen U37, and AlphaGo actually agreed with that assessment. At the same time, I'm latching on to the fact that that they are confused. Oh, oh. He said I'll just slap himself on the side of the head. Normally we resent you for a long time ago, but he won't try. He play, he play, he play. I brought his friend because yesterday I noticed that he really wanted to analyze the game. There was this heavy sadness over that whole floor. You could feel it during the game. I admit that it was a very clear loss on my part. For us, AlphaGo is obviously just some computer program. But looking at the commentary on the internet, I already saw the commentators call AlphaGo like he and she during the games, completely unconsciously. The tendency to anthropomorphize uh, AI systems is one of the big obstacles in the way of actually trying to understand how AI might impact the world in the future. I think that people are right to think but there is a danger that as we continue to improve these systems that we might miss that, that threshold where, where we do cross a, over into danger. Where the leaders of the research teams in those organizations, the, you know, the big ones that are working on AI, IBM, Microsoft, so on, uh, come together and make sure that AI is used ethically and responsibly. I think what is important is that there is this uh, community of people who are leading uh, the cutting edge of AI, uh, who are interacting with academics and already are thinking about the, the long term and how we can ensure that innovation is responsible as the power of these machines gets even greater. He's got to win today to keep hope alive. I don't know how to uh, describe the situation. I mean, there's no point in playing out the end game and you're going you know, to lose. When Lisa is in the game, he, he looked like unhappy. It just especially about this game. Because he don't play his game. Many, many people are talk about the Lisa Doll. Sometimes in China, in, in Korea, in Japan, we see go or like ah. Oh, please gentle with the Lisa Doll. You could see that he was more relaxed after he had lost three games in a row. You know, in the end, it isn't about pride. I was thinking I'd just pull the plug. You just pull the plug. Yeah. Because for the moment, he tried many, many things to play with AlphaGo, to understand AlphaGo, but he never tried to play. Himself. I told many, many times AlphaGo look like the real mirror. When you play with AlphaGo, you feel very strange. It's developing into a very, very dangerous fight. I think he is already planning on trying something. He said, oh, magic. Oh, what would be the magic move? He said, oh, he's running short on time, but he's going to have to use up all his time. Yeah, there. He's, he's just burned like seven or eight minutes. He feel very, very cold, but I need patience. AlphaGo has just played something mm. maybe unusual. You know, I'm not actually sure what AlphaGo is trying to do here. This could be mm. that it actually can't find a way through. That's just like trying not to look horrified. Yeah, okay, so I think there's something went wrong. That's the longest we've searched the entire game. Yeah. It's not it's not I do get the impression that AlphaGo is... If d yeah, has figured out how to write code that doesn't have bugs, that is a bigger news story than AlphaGo. So this is the first time in the in the four matches mm -hmm. that we've seen moves like that. Right. I, I was so confident that this Black Moya would just be consolidated by Black and that there was nothing there. Wow. I'm almost going to tear up. Was was uh, was game four, um, <clears throat> where he comes back and wins. And especially after a zero three down, uh, at the time it seems to be hopeless that the end of the world is coming. But uh, we see the light. What were you thinking when you made that play? It does leave me a little bit in awe of the human brain's power, in particular Lee's amazing ability to cause AlphaGo problems and find something seemingly out of nothing. What probability does it give it as weight? So the god move was literally a god move because yes. we believe that only one in 10,000 yeah. uh, humans would have found that move. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of thinking that maybe AlphaGo hasn't recovered from game four yet. <laughs> but why is he winning though? This one looks like white is winning. We all say some of AlphaGo moves are so weird and strange and maybe mistakes. But after a game is finished, we have to doubt ourselves, our judgment. This is what 10 or maybe 11 dot play looks like. 
you can see these other better moves and AlphaGo is rejecting them. So the bigger my margin of territory, the more confident I am that I'm going to win. Why should I be seizing all this extra territory when I don't need it? The lessons that AlphaGo is teaching us are going to influence how Go is played. Just as in the case of the Go games, the machine made moves that surprised even the experts. And eventually the machines will gain our confidence because we will see that very, very often they make a better guess than we could have made as humans. It was very hard to... It's very hard to... Uh, and from there it went on to a level that I never expected. At least in a broad sense, Move 37 begat Move 78, begat um, a new attitude, at least, you know, a new way of seeing the game. I remember hearing a talk by Kasparov, who says that uh, a good human plus a machine is the best combination.